Hey everyone, I'm Greg Tatum. I'm going to do a talk today about lighting in WebGL. Um, and the material for this talk I put together a couple of years ago for a fellowship that I did through the Mozilla Developer Network on writing up some information about how WebGL works as kind of a series of material that someone could do a lecture on. Um, and so I'm just going to work through the material that I put together a few years back. Um, and so for the basics of what we'll be talking about, um, I built kind of a no dependency um, WebGL thing that will um, kind of explain lighting. Um, some of the prerequisites for this is probably knowing matrix math, knowing what um, it'd be helpful to know about model view and projection matrices, um, because I'm going to skimp over those and not talk about them. Um, but you can probably get a decent amount out of it, even if you just want to gloss over that information. And um, the link for the code will be in the comments below. So getting started, uh, to look at this script, you can see we have a bunny on the screen. And um, the index page is pretty simple. It's got our, our shaders in here, just embedded as script tags, which we load in to get the text to create the sh shaders. And we have a vertex and fragment shader, and then our dependencies. And you can see I have some shared things where I've implemented myself um, some of the kind of prerequisites with some of the math. Um, the, Code examples are all documented with comments, which um, I'm going to go ahead and collapse since I'm going to be talking through some of them. And it does the manual work of actually doing WebGL from scratch. Um, with some of the helper libraries, I've um, prefixed on, on an object called MDN. Um, and so the basics of how this thing gets set up is we, we create a program, create our buffers, create locations. Um, we'll save our matrix transforms there. Um, and have some internal state for some color. Um, and then we compute the projection matrix and compute the view matrix, and then we start a draw loop. Um, so I'm gonna keep most of that code closed because we don't really care particularly about that. Um, and then look at our draw call. call. Our draw call um, will compute our model matrix, then update all of our attributes and uniforms and then finally, it'll draw the elements, which will take, uh, draw them as GL triangles with our bunny model that we have. And then we have a loop for request animation frame that will continue to loop and draw our bunny. Um, so that's kind of the basics of what we're looking at. Um, but what, we're, what we kind of care more about right now is, is the uh, shader code. Um, so the shader code here uh, for the vertex shader will position our bunny wrap it on the screen. And then finally, um, what we care about is how do we light this thing? How do we make it, give it color? So right now I have a uniform called color. And this uniform is, is actually defined here up at the top. So I can change this value here. Um, so let's change this to zero um, and refresh. And you can see as I change these values on the code on the right, the bunny changes up top. Um, and just to show you that we don't have to define it as a uniform, but that's kind of helpful. Um, we'll go ahead and define it here. So we want a four-dimensional vector uh, with a red value, a um, green value, and a blue value, and finally the alpha. And these are all arranged, um, of the values are between zero and one. And that's ultimately what we're setting, is we're just setting a color. Uh, so we'll go ahead and save there and look at it. And we've set our color. So I can change this to something else. And right now our bunny is unlit. There's no lighting information there. There's no way to really differentiate parts of the surface to be able to see, to give our bunny some kind of shading and make it look like it's somewhat of a realistic object. Um, so in the follow-up video, I'll start explaining how you actually start to apply some type of lighting effects.